last lecture we learned about the weak focusing we derived an equation of motion and this equation of motion was for the particles motion when there is a dipolar magnetic field having some gradient in it and this combination of dipolar magnetic field and gradient leads to weak focusing now there are another, and also we learned about the geometric focusing in which uh, shape of the magnet which is known as sector dipole magnet due to virtue of its geometry it focuses in the horizontal plane there are another types of focusing also available for the charged particle motion and those are strong focusing and edge focusing and on the basis of a strong focusing there is a principle namely alternate gradient principle in short ag principle which is used to make charged particle optics in synchrotron and transfer lens so we will learn these things in present lecture now here we recall the focusing of light using the thin convex lens so just i draw a convex lens which you have learned during your school courses that this is a convex lens and this is the optic axis and light ray when passes through this lens it bends the light rays to have a focus on a point this is the focal point so it has some bending here theta by which light ray bends during the passage of the convex lens so we also have to have such kind of bending for charged particles if we want to focus these charged particle rays so how this can be achieved we will see this now in charged particle definitely the control of trajectories is using the magnetic field and in magnetic field if charged particle passes the radius of curvature is this we have seen this formula again and again that radius of curvature is directly proportional to p and inversely proportional to magnetic field b now for if there is a charged particle and if it is passing through a region where magnetic field b is applied then we can calculate what is the bending and that bending you can say that this is the bending by d theta and this is the radius of curvature r so d theta will be q by p b dl this is just this is just dl by r and r is placed from here so in this case the total bending of the charged particle trajectory will be q by p and integration of bdl so this is the angle made by a trajectory under the magnetic field of the given lens it is the magnetic field which we use for uh, bending the particle trajectory and this is the length over which magnetic field is applied length over which magnetic field is applied b is applied so you can see here that alone b is not enough to decide the charged particle trajectories or angle in the charged particle trajectory rather than the combination of the magnetic field and over the length on which it is applied that is much more important means combination of magnetic field and length it is useful rather than only b so now we see the basic mechanism of focusing how we can achieve the focusing so suppose this is the optic axis in red color and a particle is coming on this trajectory and this is the magnetic element which we want to use as a lens magnetic element when it passes through this magnetic element the magnetic field and length of this element j 
generates a bending theta 1 in the trajectory and trajectory passes through this point. Here the deviation in the particle trajectory from the design trajectory is x1. So if this happens for all the trajectories then we say this magnetic element is capable of focusing the charged particle rays. So we draw another trajectory also which has larger deviation x2 than the previous trajectory then it has larger bending angle to reach the same focus point. If we draw another trajectory having opposite displacement means displacement in the opposite direction to the design axis then again it has the opposite angle due to sine in the sine means if we say that sine of these angles are minus then sine of this angle is plus. So now we can see by these trajectories that theta is directly proportional to x. As x increases the required theta is also increases to send the trajectories on the focus point. And if x changes its sign theta should also changes its sign. Therefore now we have seen in the previous slide that theta is directly proportional to B D L D theta is directly proportional to B D L means this theta means B D L it should be directly proportional to X then focusing can occur. So if this combination we are able to generate proportional to X then that kind of magnetic field will focus the charged particle. In geometric focusing B was fixed because that is the dipole magnet. So that was constant over the space however the length which the trajectory passes through the magnetic field has different uh, for different initial displacement and that different DL or L leads to focusing. And in the magnet, dipole magnet, if you introduce the gradient, then bending as well as focusing is achieved. That is known as weak focusing and in that case field index must be between the 0 and 1 for stable motion in both the planes. Can we separate the bending and focusing? Can we make a magnet which is having only gradient and no dipolar component? In that case, no bending of the design path will be there because dipolar magnetic field is absent and there is only gradient so focusing can occur. This type of magnet will behave exactly the lens as of the light optics. So answer is yes, we can do that. If we can generate such kind of magnetic field in which vertical component of the magnetic field increases with displacement x from the design axis and the horizontal component of the magnetic field increases with the vertical displacement then this kind of magnet can be used exactly similar to the optic, uh, convex lens in the optics or concave lens in the optics. Now you can see here on the design axis we have x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. This is, these are the coordinates on the design axis because on design axis itself defines the origin. So x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0, this gives b x is equal to 0 and b y is equal to 0 for this case. And b x is equal to 0 and b y is equal to 0 means there is no magnetic field on the design path. Means design path traverses this magnet without getting affected. There is no effect of this magnet on the design trajectory. And this is the case similar to the light optics that optic axis does not change when it passes through the convex lens or concave lens. And as x becomes non-zero or y becomes non-zero, there is finite magnetic field. And this magnetic field is used to bend the particle trajectories which are deviated from the design axis and this angle of the deviated trajectory leads to the focusing. This kind of magnet is known as a quadrupole magnet 
because this field can be generated if we have four poles rather than two poles. Now how these four poles will be arranged we will see it. Now B y B y as a G x which was written. So this is the graph showing the variation of B y with x. This is a simple straight line having some inclination with x axis and this inclination defined the gradient. What is the gradient G? Now you can see that as x increases here, x is increasing here, the magnetic field also increases. Means the applied force by the magnetic field on the charged particle will also increase. So as we go further and further from the design axis, this is the design axis which is x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0 origin. Here is the design axis coming out of the screen and if particle is deviated along the x axis, the more deviated particle feel more force means more bending and it is the design characteristic of the focusing edge we have seen that if x is more, theta should be more. And if x is negative, here is x is negative and here x is positive. So in the case of negative, because B y is also has changed its sign, so force will also change its sign and it will be in the reverse direction of that, of this direction. So now again, if particle is deviated towards negative x, it will get a force towards the positive x and if particle is deviated in the positive x, it will get a force in the negative x. So overall, all the particles will feel a force which will send those particles towards the design axis. It means this is a kind of focusing. We are trying to confine the particles towards the design trajectory. Now how the four poles are arranged? These four poles are arranged in this manner. This is a north pole. This is a south pole, this is again a north pole and this is a south pole. These four poles make a quadrupole magnet. This is the pole face profile. Now like the conductor, in the conductor the electric field line always meets at right angle. In a ferromagnet surface the magnetic field lines meet at right angle. So, these are the magnetic field line which emerges from the north pole to south pole and due to symmetry here it is the north pole at this distance and similarly here is the north pole at this distance here south pole on the same distance and south pole tip here is also on the same distance. So due to this symmetry magnetic field will be zero at the center which is the desired characteristic of a lens and as we go away from the design trajectory you can see the gap between the pole faces is reducing and this reduced pole gap generates a higher magnetic field and higher magnetic field means more force. So larger deviation in the particle coordinate will give a larger kick by this magnet. Now you can see here if we take four points say this is the point number one, this is point number two and this is point number 3 and this is point number 4. So point 1 and 2 are having deviation along the x-axis while point 3 and 4 are having displacement along the y-axis. Now at this point the magnetic field line is in just this direction that is the tangent at this location on the magnetic field lines. Here the tangent is in this direction, so magnetic field is in this direction. You can see that when x is positive, magnetic field is in the opposite direction when, with the case of when x is negative. The similar is the case for y-axis, that on the positive y-axis and negative y-axis, the magnetic fields are in the opposite direction. Now if a particle comes here, suppose, and particle comes here uh, on the point 3 and point 4. You can see if uh, particle is coming, it is coming out of the screen and uh, magnetic field is in this direction. So 
force will be V cross V. So V is outside the screen, V is in this direction, so force will be in this direction. Similarly, here because the magnetic field has the reverse direction then this place, so force will also have reverse sign in the direction, so force will be in this direction. So force on a positively charged particle which is coming outside will be in this direction on the vertical axis. So force is towards the design axis. Now suppose the deviation in the horizontal axis. Now you can see if you are taking the positive charged particle which is coming outside similar to the case of point 3 and 4 you will see that the direction of force will be away from the axis. So this is not desired here. Means this type of quadrupole magnet is focusing in the vertical plane while it is defocusing in the horizontal plane. But we have to live with it. Actually Maxwell's equations compels us to have dy is equal to gx and dx is equal to gy. And due to this we have focusing either in horizontal plane or in vertical plane. In the other plane there will be always defocusing. So suppose if we swap the poles means north is swept by the south and south is swept by the north means we have rotated the quadrupole magnet by 90 degree then the focusing will occur in the horizontal plane and defocusing in the vertical plane. Means if we consider a single plane and we place two quadrupoles just rotated by 90 degree then first quadrupole if it is focusing then second quadrupole will be defocusing. Means we have a convex and concave lens combination. Similarly will be the case for the other plane. Here concave and convex combination will be there. So using these two combination we can always make focusing in both the planes. Now what is the focal length of this lens? This is the particle trajectory which is coming. When it passes through this magnetic field it generates a bending angle theta and particle trajectory crosses from this point. So for obtaining the focal length we have to take initial condition in which x prime is 0 means this trajectory is making 0 angle with respect to design axis means it is coming parallel to the design axis and it has certain deviation x and this is from where it cuts or it crosses the design path it is the focal length. So due to simple trigonometry we can obtain that f is equal to minus x by tan theta. Here I am taking this sign as a minus. And in paraxial approximation where theta is small, theta is small, we can always have, can have tan theta is approximately theta. And this approximation is again used here. So our focal length is x by theta x. Now from previous slides we can put the value of theta x in terms of b and l. Now here theta x will be q by p integration of b by dl and b y for the quadrupole magnet has g x. So in place of b y we can put g x so this will be g x dl and g it is the gradient. So gradient will be constant for a given quadrupole magnet. We have seen that in our uh, this slide that this gradient is constant for a given quadrupole magnet because this is a straight line. So gradient will not change only magnetic field will change. So gradient is constant in the quadrupole magnet. So this gradient is constant, we can take it outside the integration. So this integration will be Q by P G integration X dl. Now if we take very very small 
length for the quadrupole magnet means el is very small means we are talking about the thin lens approximation means dl tends to zero this is the thin lens approximation in thin lens approximation we can assume that x remains constant inside the magnet just you can see that this is a delta function where the magnetic field appears so just before the magnet and after the magnet x doesn't change only there is a change in the x prime which was zero earlier before the magnet it changed suddenly after the magnet and has theta x minus theta x in this case so x can also be taken outside the integration so this integration will become q by p gx integration dl and dl is just the integrated length of the quadrupole so this will be q g by p xl and this quantity gradient normalized by the momentum and charge is known as normalized quadrupole strength k so quadrupoles bending is equal to kxl we say this is a quadrupolar kick when kick is proportional to x here we can say theta x is proportional to x l and k are constant for a given quadrupole so as x changes theta also changes so theta is directly proportional to x in case of dipole magnet this theta was independent of x so this kind of kick is known as quadrupolar kick and by comparing these two equation this equation and this equation we can say that focal length is just minus 1 by kl minus focal length is for focusing for a diverging lens or concave type lens this will be positive so you can say a equation here uh, trajectory here after a defocusing quadrupole this trajectory goes away from the design axis and in this case theta x is positive this is positive that's why focal length is also defined as positive in the diverging lens now suppose we want focusing in both the planes simultaneously one quadrupole it is focusing in one plane then it will be two focusing in the another plane so for overall focusing in both the planes we at least require two uh, quadrupole magnet so in any optics of charged particles you will always see that at least there are two quadrupole magnets in two quadrupole magnets in one plane if it is focusing and defocusing combination so for the other plane it will be defocusing and focusing combination so by properly choosing the strength of these two quadrupole magnets and the distance between these two quadrupole magnets you can see that these both trajectories can be focused means in both the planes we can get focusing and remember recall your lens making formula so this is the overall focal length of two lenses combination that is 1 by f1 1 by f2 minus d by f1 f2 f1 is the focal length of the first lens f2 sorry it is it should be 2 f2 is the focal length of second lens and d is the distance between these lenses so this is also true in this case also so you can always calculate the focal length of the combination of two quadrupole using this formula remember this is valid only when we are using thin lens approximation if quadrupole is not thin then we have to calculate explicitly what should be the x and x prime at the exit of the quadrupole magnet and what will be the effective focal length of that combination we will learn these things when the quadrupole is not thin in the next lecture